Good pandemic day to you, Hiddenwell Farmers. <clears throat> I guess if you be out on a thousand acres and there's nobody around, that would be considered social distancing. I don't know. The rules change every day. <laughs> I tickle myself about that, but, um, but I'm out here at the, the farm. Um, decided I'd come out and just <clears throat> hang if nothing else but uh, I, I don't want to make anybody sad I always mean for these to be uplifting things but I wanted to uh, tell you that uh, <clears throat> today I, uh, I said goodbye uh, I helped with the funeral of my aunt Louise now Louise Smith was my neighbor for 17 years um, she became sick about two years ago, had to move to Illinois, uh, spent the last couple of years with her daughters, and she passed away up there. Uh, October of uh, 2018, I believe, was the last time that I got to see my Aunt Louise. Um, but we had, a, we had a great run and, and uh, really enjoyed her, and I have a million pictures and memories from food to everything, but I thought I'd tell you a couple of stories about my Aunt Louise. Uh, and, you know, she's a part of me. And if you'll see this sign right here, this no passing sign, we were cutting her grass about maybe eight years ago. I can't remember the exact date, but we were cutting her grass. And um, as we were out in the front yard, this car came down Highway 830, and it literally... I don't know what happened, but it come off the hill in her yard, and they the the car and the four young people that in it skimmed along the edge of the road, and the outside of her yard and and ditch line just kind of grabbed that car, and it took it. Then it went through my yard. <laughs> it took out my um, big yellow flowers. I'm trying to remember. Hey Sue. Sue. Sue, what's the name of that yellow f bush out there in front of our house? What's that called? Forsythia. Yeah, Forsythia. But anyway, and it also took out the big giant no passing sign, her mailbox, hit the stairs, the old stairs in front of my house, and their car exploded. I mean, they left lights and bumpers and everything out there in the middle of that yard. And, uh, and so... Uh, <clears throat> she took the, then people took out this road sign right here. I got hanging on on my rabbit barn, right out there in front of her house. And they just destroyed their car. They didn't stop. They didn't say nothing. They just drove off. I mean, just gone. One of the ladies that was there jumped in her car and and followed them all the way like to East Bernstadt or something like that. And they called the police. Police, you know, like, well, what do you want us to do about it? You know, it's just. You know, everybody was totally disinterested. I called our magistrate. Our magistrate did not come and do anything about the sign. And that sign and that twisted pole and everything laid out there on the side of the road for three weeks. Till I got sick of it, so I went out there and I picked the pole, the bent pole up off the ground, and I sold it for scrap metal. And I put that in my barn and it just sat there for four years. And the other twisted pole, they never did come fix it. Never put up another sign, nothing. And so I claimed it, and I thought, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that no-passing sign. And uh, what a great memory, uh, standing out there with Aunt Louise, because I remember she was like, <clears throat> in fashion of Aunt Louise, this is what she would say. She went, oh, G-O. <laughs> that was what, uh, I've never known anybody who would say G-O, but she was always one of the, G-O. <laughs> Just the way that she said it was always perfect. But uh, anyway, so every time I come out to my farm, I always remember Aunt Louise. <clears throat> but that's not the only thing. I mean, there's a million stories I could tell you, but I will tell you about my dogs. I have four dogs living at the house, and three of them spend most of their time, about half their life, outdoors running in the yard. Uh, they can stay in our garage anytime they want, but they, you know, they're in and out. My Aunt Louise just 
gosh, she loved to feed them dogs. And she would pour her scraps out and everything like that. Well, one day my three dogs were missing. I didn't know where they was. We went to put them up and they was gone. I mean, they was just gone. I ran up and down the highways. I was a hollering and a squalling and everything like that. After about uh, an hour of looking for them, I gave up. I just figured they stole or they'd run off. They'd come back if they wanted to. I had Susan involved in it. It wasn't too long. Uh, I heard her front door open, and she was talking to them like, you know, people. Like, now you guys be good, and you remember your Aunt Louise now, and come back and I'll feed you, and, and uh, don't tell nobody about being over here and stuff. And I physically watched all three of my dogs walk out of her house and come back home. <laughs> so she took to she took to Robo, uh, and she just she loved having that dog lay on her front porch. I mean, she would, but I mean, every now and then they just disappear and they'd be in her house. And uh, and she was meticulous too. I mean, as far as dirt and clean, she was absolutely meticulous. So I mean, she must have spent half the night scrubbing up after them nasty things after they left. But uh, but boy, she sure she sure did enjoy them. And if they started barking, she loved them even more. She said, "Them's my guard dogs. They let me know if anything happens." I was always worried about her and them dogs and keeping her up and all this stuff and. Boy, I tell you what, she always liked them. She liked having them around. But anyway, that's story time from Hidden Well. A little memorial to my Aunt Louise. Uh, the good news is, you know, this isn't the end. Uh, I'll get to see her again. That's the good thing about knowing the Lord. You get to see your loved ones again. God bless. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.